Hello there. Welcome to Sleep Mode. Bedtime stories and guided sleep meditations for gamers. Presented by Glitch Creative Labs. Please be sure to not listen to this recording while driving, operating heavy machinery, or while on the run from a horde of creepers. The goal of every episode of Sleep Mode is to help you relax and unwind, even after a long day of mining pixels. So let's take a mostly peaceful journey into the world of everyone's favorite building sandbox, Minecraft. So you can put down the controller and get some rest. So please, find a nice, comfortable space that is free from distractions, where you can enjoy a moment to relax and hopefully get some restful sleep. The use of headphones is recommended but not necessary to enjoy this experience. Laying down on a nice cozy bed is preferable. But you may also choose to experience sleep mode on your favorite couch or gaming chair. If you enjoy your time with us, please consider subscribing to sleep mode and give this episode a thumbs up. It's time to turn off the lights and close your eyes. Prepare to experience sleep mode. Minecraft, a mostly peaceful bedtime story for gamers. In three, two, one. A world of infinite possibilities and creative wonders greets you as you open your eyes to a beautiful, yet oddly blocky landscape. But how did you get here? And what is this insatiable urge to punch trees and dig holes that is building up within you? Wait a moment. Building. That is exactly what you feel like doing at this very moment. But where should you begin? The answer is lying somewhere deep inside of your subconscious. All we have to do is take a moment to relax and find the spark of creativity that lives inside of each and every one of us. If you would like to skip the guided relaxation segment, please fast forward to 8 minutes. Still here? Excellent. Let's begin. First, let's start by doing a nice, long stretch on your relaxation space, allowing your arms and legs to fall into a naturally comfortable position that feels right for you. Now imagine that you're taking a look at your surroundings. Tall spruce trees dot a peaceful mountainous landscape. There's even a small river lazily babbling towards a lake. This feels like the perfect place to build a shelter that will protect you from the dangers that lurk in the night. Now let's imagine our structure. Take in a deep breath from your nose. Imagine the smell of the pixelated earth mixing with the cool mountain mists filling your lungs as it breaks away all of the stress and anxiety that plagues your daily life. Hold your breath for a moment. Now breathe out from your mouth. Feel all of that negative energy that is blocking your creativity begin to vanish, replaced by a sensation of stillness and tranquility. Now once again, take in a deep, cleansing breath. As you hold that breath in for a moment, let your mind drift to how you can best enjoy this placid mountainscape. Ah, an idea is starting to take shape in your mind. Now breathe out and let your body seek deep into your relaxation space as your mind lands on the perfect home for you at this moment. And there it is. The mountains, the trees, the lake. You have everything you need to build yourself a cozy, 
little mountainside cabin retreat. Now let's quiet your mind so you can imagine the look and feel of your new home. Push out all other lingering thoughts and focus on my voice. See yourself sitting beside a fireplace in a comfortable spruce chair that you built using your own two hands. The wooden walls of your home high up in the mountains have a clean, earthy smell to them. You gaze outside an enormous glass window where just below you can see the sun slowly set on the horizon, glistening on the waters of the lake, then vanishing behind the tree line. This can be your new home. Now all we have to do is make it a pixelated reality. This will take no small amount of effort. So let's make sure that your body is ready to craft. You'll have to climb up the mountain just a bit to find the perfect view. So let's give those legs a nice long stretch pointing your toes downward and allowing your legs to tense up just a bit as you stretch. Hold this position and let that tension really build and release. Now feel the warmth inside your legs slowly unravel the tight muscles within, making them feel heavy and relax. Feel them as they slowly sink down and become at peace. Now let's move on to your arms. You'll be spending some time punching, digging, and swinging in order to get the supplies you'll need to start building your new home. Stretch your arms out over your chest and tightly make a fist. Now hold this pose and let the tension build up as you have your arms suspended upward. You should feel a little bit of pressure around your wrists, forearms, biceps, and fingers the longer you hold this position. When you're ready, release your stretch and allow your arms to return to a natural position while you enjoy a nice warming sensation as it slowly travels across your arms as they become heavier and heavier. Do you feel relaxed at this very moment? Allow the rest of your body to feel the same sense of relaxation as you get ready to build. Now that you've pictured the perfect place to call your home, a cozy little mountainside cabin. Night will be coming soon, so you should get moving up the mountain to find a spot to build. Who knows what kind of creeps come out at night. You find the climb up the mountain was much easier than anticipated. It feels like you were almost meant to easily explore this world. You quickly move your way up, passing a few tasty looking pigs and chickens as you climb. They might come in handy later, but now is not the time to think about what to put into your stomach. Right now, you should focus on making a roof to go over your blocky head. Just about halfway up the mountain, you take a glance over your shoulder and have a look at the view. The tree line starts to blanket the land below and you have a clear view of the river as it empties itself into a shimmering lake. You even notice something that looks like a small village on the other side of the lake. It's good to know that you're not the only one out here in the wilds. Ah, piggies, chickens, and a nice view. This place has it all. Well, it almost does. Time to mine and craft a new home.
You spend the remainder of your day taking down a few of the tall spruce and oak trees that surround the mountain. You gathered more than enough to make the logs and wooden planks you needed to build yourself a cute little starter home. And just before the sun sets and the night falls, your home is nothing special just yet. Just four bare walls and a wooden roof. Not exactly the sprawling mountainside retreat that you had in your mind, but it's more than adequate to get you through the night. The moon begins to rise in all of its glowing pixelated glory. It looks and feels so very peaceful. You even begin to wonder why you feel the urge to stay indoors when night falls. Hmm. I wonder what that could be. Maybe it's one of those piggies you saw climbing up the mountain. Hmm. A well-cooked pork chop would be pretty fantastic right about now. Maybe one small nighttime adventure outside in the dark might be a good idea. If nothing else, it'll give you a chance to get some dinner. You really did work up quite the appetite building your house. But it is pretty dark out there. Luckily, you've managed to find a stick and a piece of coal to turn into a decent torch. There we go, all lit. It's time to go exploring. You peek your head outside of the doorway and begin to look for any signs of danger. It seems like the coast is clear. Let's go find some dinner. The world feels like a completely different place at night. The same location, of course, but a whole new vibe. Insects chirp and play their melodies as the cooler night winds begin to rustle each individual leaf on the branches of the trees you pass, and soft moonlight creates an aura of mystery around every block. Oh yeah, you are on the hunt for something porky to eat. You slowly inch your way to the location of the rustling sound, your torch lighting the path ahead. You stay silent for just one moment so you can hear your prey. There it is, just behind that bush. Now carefully, get ready to pounce. You lower your stance and make your way forward, thinking about all the deliciously different ways that you can craft a pig into a meal. Slowly now, you don't want to scare it away. Inch by inch, you make your way to the rustling bush until you're right on top of it. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, grab it. Hold up a minute. That's no succulent pig. That's a giant spider. And it does not look very happy at all. It would probably be a good idea to run back to your house as fast as possible. Time to leg it. The embers of your torch leave a literal blazing trail behind you as you run for your life. You turn around to see if the impossibly large spider is still chasing you. Well, the good news is that you seem to have outrun the spider. The bad news is it's been replaced by some sort of green-skinned zombie and a walking skeleton. What's going on in this place? Giant spiders, zombies, skeletons. How are you supposed to survive the night with such terrible monsters walking about? You keep running until you see your cabin just ahead. Fortunately, you were smart enough to leave the door wide open so you don't have to waste any time getting back inside. Hopefully, 
there won't be any more surprises along the way. You make it to your front door as fast as your legs can carry you, and close it behind you, leaving the band of undead misfits flailing about, unable to get inside. It's a good thing that zombies don't know how to work a doorknob. It was pretty fortunate that you left the door open. Good thinking on your part. Otherwise, you could have been a goner. Ah, <sighs> at least you're safe and sound for now. What was that sound? You turn around and find yourself face to face with some sort of green-colored horror walking around in your home. A terrifyingly blank expression plastered on its face as it creepily walks towards you. That is far enough, you... you... creeper. Hmm, that sounds like the perfect name for this thing. Creeper. I like it. It looks like you have no choice but to raise your torch to strike it. You raise your torch high in the air as the creeper slowly stalks closer to you. But without noticing, you've accidentally set the wooden roof of your house on fire. Well, this isn't exactly the idea that you had in mind when you wanted to be next to a roaring fire inside of your cozy log cabin. The creature doesn't miss a beat as it continues to advance your way. Great. A fire and a creeper. This is not the best start to your adventure. What are you going to do now? You have no choice but to defend yourself. And hopefully, you will make it out of this mess alive. You drop the torch and raise your fists in front of you to give the creeper a nice jab to the face. Pow. That'll show it not to mess with you. Wait a second. What is it doing now? And why is it blinking like that? Oh, I have a bad feeling about it. There's a ringing in your ear as you wake up, surrounded by the ruins of what once was your little wooden house. Ah, what just happened here? What was that thing, and why did it just blow up like that? The impact of the blast must have thrown you out of the house while it was on fire, knocking you unconscious in the process. Okay, note to self. Creepers blow up real good when you hit them. I wonder what other discoveries are out there waiting to be made. You close your eyes in relief and make a little promise to yourself to see everything there is that this world offers. And hopefully, you won't die trying. Once again, the sun rises. Well, one thing is certain. You're going to need to build a new home. Since, you know... Your old one has been blown to smithereens. I wonder what would happen if you tried digging through the stone walls of the mountain. If only there was some way for you to make some sort of, you know, digging tool. Time slowly moves forward, as it tends to do, bringing with it a number of changes and updates. The days really have gone by in a flash, as they turn into weeks, then the weeks turn into months. Eventually, a whole year has passed since that first eventful night. You've learned so much about the world that surrounds you. It feels like you've truly seen and done everything you can do in this world. Your once modest four-walled wooden shack 
has been rebuilt into a sprawling mountainside mansion. The walls of your home are lined with fantastic treasures and artifacts gathered from your adventures in the nether. Your armory is well stocked with wondrous weaponry made from gold, diamonds, and netherite. You've even built a secret passageway that leads you into the depths of your mountain home where you've had many adventures exploring the mine shafts of the old builders. But after all the sights you've seen, for every creeper and dragon slain, something feels missing. You think about this fact as you look out onto the steady rainstorm that blankets the land from your impressively tall glass picture window that can be found in your study. Embers glow and fade from your well-crafted cobblestone fireplace as a series of what can only be described as lonely thoughts come to mind. But is this really loneliness or boredom that you're experiencing? You think about this for a while as you gaze onto the lake. There has to be more to do. You know what? Maybe one of the villagers below has heard of a juicy rumor that might lead to a new adventure. With that in mind, you put on your fancy diamond armor and begin making your way down to the village. Time to get moving. You walk the halls of your home until you step inside of a very unassuming room with a rather normal looking door at the far side of the wall. A door that opens up to a secret passageway that leads you to the heart of the mountain. Glass lanterns line the wall, ensuring that there will be no more repeat mistakes of the unfortunate torch incident. They light the path of a neatly cut mine shaft that you spend countless hours creating. Sure, the occasional pest spawns here and there, but it's nothing that you can't handle. You take the small trip down a cut stone stairway to a water-filled cave that lets out to the river and lake. At the end of the walkway is a small dock with a boat waiting for you to board it. The boat is one of your simpler builds, but it definitely gets the job done. So, you step inside and begin to slowly row towards the direction of the village. The rain finally lets up as you arrive at the village. Residents go about their usual routines. Most villagers stick their oddly large noses up at you, but a few familiar faces greet you with a wave as you make your way to the local public house to see if you can learn about any new rumors that might be floating around. Maybe you can even enjoy a brew or two as you wait around for new information. The pub is unusually quiet, but the atmosphere is its normal peaceful vibe. I wonder who actually built this place. Not to be rude, but the average villager doesn't really seem creative enough for a build of this magnitude and quality. But I digress. You find a quiet spot to see if any interesting information might pop up. In the meantime, you wave at the bartender and order some food and a potion of strength and enjoy a nice quiet moment inside of the pub.
Well, I tell you, they're as real as the nose on my face. I no why. It's true, I tell you. Old Walter saw them with his own two eyes. You know why they call him Old Walter, right? That old coon can't tell a pig from a giant spider, he can't. You do your best to try to not remember any embarrassing and almost deadly times in your past. Era myth, man. Old Walt probably just wandered into a cave, saw some red stone, before he was chased away by a monster. Oh, not just one monster. He said there was an army of zombies blocking the way. <laughs> That's even more of a reason why you should just forget the whole mess, if you ask me. Ah, you're just being chicken. I'll head off to that dungeon myself if I need to, and I won't share any of the shiny rubies with ya. Wait, what did he just say? All right, calm down, calm down. Now, where'd you say this dungeon was again? Oh, it's outside of town. Just past the twin oak trees that are surrounded by red mushrooms and a shifty-eyed sheep named Gus. <laughs> okay, now I know you're full of it. Okay, maybe the sheep is a bit much, but it's not too far from here. I heard that the girl that built this very tavern was headed that way to see the rubies for herself. Well, it looks like you have nothing to worry about then. How so? Well, if she finds these so-called rubies, and you won't have to worry about sharing them with me, because they'll be all hers. <laughs> oh, why am I friends with you again? Because I'm the only one who'll listen to you. The pair of talkative villagers go off on another tangent for a while, until they eventually get up, say their goodbyes, and leave the pub. Rubies, huh? Now you've seen diamonds, emeralds, and all sorts of other gemstones. But never a ruby. I thought those were supposed to be a myth, lost in the code. But if they are indeed real, then that means that you haven't seen everything just yet. And a dungeon filled with zombies is basically child's play. So what's the harm in taking a quick look? It looks like you might have just found a little bit of excitement today after all. You finish your potion and set out into the forest. Wow, what a nice day to have an adventure. Well, hopefully, have an adventure. If we follow the directions correctly, it shouldn't be too much further from here. The quiet sounds of nature have become all too familiar to you. Since you've arrived at this place, you've basically been all alone with those peaceful sounds and the occasional monster or two. So another builder is already looking for this impossible treasure. I wonder what they're like. If they built that entire tavern, they must have an impressive amount of skill. Maybe they're even more skilled than you are. Well, it looks like you just might get that answer sooner rather than later. You stop in your tracks to see two perfectly symmetrical oak trees Surrounded by a troop of red mushrooms, standing side by side, guarding the entrance to a small cave. However, you see no shifty-eyed sheep named Gus, so this may not even be the right place. Just kidding. You came all this way, so you'll have to check for yourself. You gather some courage, and carefully enter the cave. Well, this place isn't scary at all, is it? Hello? Are there any scary monsters in here? No? Okay, just checking. The interior of the cave seems about as average as you can get. Your footsteps echo with each step. There is a scene of pitch dark emptiness that surrounds you as you carefully begin to light a torch. Luckily, 
there does not appear to be any wood that you can set on fire. The light begins to illuminate the area around you as you move forward, until you find yourself at a dead end. Of course, I guess the rumors turned out to be false after all. What a waste of time. And you were so looking forward to another adventure, to add some excitement to your day. But I guess this was just the product of an old man's imagination, after all. You turn around to begin to leave the cave, when something catches your eye. It appears to be a message written on the cave wall. What does it say? You walk over to read the literal writing on the wall, and the message is a bit confusing to you. It says, going down? What could that mean? What's that noise? Uh oh. No. You definitely recognize that sound. The floor below you gives way, and you find yourself falling down a mine shaft. Dang. Well played. Whoever set this booby trap, you should have seen this coming a mile away. Oh well, let's just hope the ground below doesn't hurt too bad. You land in a heap on the cold floor below you. Well, if this was someone's idea of a joke, the punchline definitely needs some work. A voice. I wonder who that is. You rush over towards the voice. Wait a second. Didn't they say something about there being an army of the... And there it is. An army of the undead. Oh, good. Finally someone came. Mind giving me a hand here? You turn the corner to find a red-headed girl in a green shirt and brown pants fighting off a horde of zombies. There has to be at least 20 or 30 angry flesh eaters clawing their way towards her. It looks like this day finally got interesting. You unsheath your sword and rush towards the army of zombies. Hacking and slashing, you manage to take out a couple of zombies with each swing of your sword. Hey, not bad at all, but does something seem off to you? Now that you mention it, it seems like no matter how many monsters you take out, there's always one to take its place. That can only mean one thing. This can only mean one thing. There's a monster spawner around here. Whoa, did she just read your mind? I'll hold him off. You look for the spawner and destroy it. Your new friend begins clearing out as many zombies as they can, while you look for the block spawning this army of biters. But no matter how hard you look, you can't seem to find the spawner. Your sword taking down more zombies than you can count. You feel your hunger start to grow, and your swings become more sluggish with each passing moment. It looks like you might actually be a goner. Well, this was fun while it lasted. Look. There it is! Your new friend points at an odd-looking brick on the wall, pulsing with a spooky energy. And with your last ounce of strength, you launch your sword at the monster spawner, smashing it into a hundred pixels. With no more reinforcements on the way, the rest of the zombies are easily taken down. Haha! <laughs> no more brains for these guys! Your new friend says with a smile on her face, let me guess, ruby hunting? Well, I'm sorry to say that there are no rubies here. This was all a wild goose chase. Yeah, well, I guess they don't exist after all. Whoa, what was that? Ooh, a large chest falls out from the hole where the spawner was located. Holy cow, maybe this wasn't a huge waste of time after all. Well, don't just stand there. 
open it. You slowly open the chest and start to see a shimmering red light begin to sparkle from inside. You can't believe it. After all the rumors and after everything you've been through today, you finally lay your eyes on a huge pile of Redstones? Ugh! All that work for a chest full of fairly common red stones. No way did that just happen. That's so wild. At least the zombie horde got your blood pumping. And I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty nice to have someone there fighting by your side. You've searched the chest and find a small note hidden among the red stones. You examine it closely and it reads, Sometimes, it's the fun you share together that builds the best memories. I guess whoever built this little dungeon has a different sense of humor. You look up from the note in disbelief until a smile slowly comes across your face. That was actually pretty fun. In fact, you haven't felt this sense of excitement in a long time. Maybe this is exactly what you've been looking for. You can have everything in life, but eventually, we all need someone to share the experience with. Well, I guess we should head back to the tavern. Wait, are you the person that built that huge house in the mountain? I'm a bit of a builder myself, and I would love to swap some ideas with you. You nod your head in agreement, as the two of you take out your pickaxes to find a way out of here. This should be interesting, especially now that you have a new friend to share in the experience. Okay, let's do this. Oh, my name is Alex, by the way. What's your name? Thank you for listening to the premiere episode of Sleep Mode Season 2. If your ears liked what they heard, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. And don't forget to give this podcast a thumbs up. And don't forget to dong that notification bell if you're watching this on YouTube. It really helps our channel grow. We're excited to bring you another fantastic season of Sleep Mode. Who knows what kind of surprises will be in store this year. On the next episode of Sleep Mode, we'll be exploring the fantastically retro world of Cuphead. It's sure to be a real humdinger. We hope you've had a pleasant journey with us, and we'll see you again real soon. Good night, gamers. <laughs>